Hey, Apo students, in this video, we're going to study a good example of a long essay question. It's not perfect, but I can tell you this person went on to make a five on their APUSH exam, and hopefully you will too, or something close to that. So here's the prompt. I'm not going to get to you word for word, but I can tell you the thinking skill. You always got to focus in on that on LEQ is continuity and change over time. The easy thing to do is give changes, but oftentimes students forget to, to talk about the continuities. So the era or the prompt was revolving around women and minorities on the American home front during World War II. So let's see what this person did a good job of and then what they could have improved upon as well. Starting off with contextualization. This is necessary for a DBQ, not so much on an LEQ, but to me, it just makes sense to teach both uh, types of essay, just writing this way to start off. So coming out of the Great Depression, coming out of the Civil War, in the years following the American Revolution, I think those are good ways to start essays because essentially what you're trying to do with contextualization is you are setting the stage for the prompt. Give me some events that kind of lead up to that, kind of surround it. In this particular essay and contextualization, you see them mentioning Pearl Harbor, um, you see the Great Depression, all kind of focusing around the underprivileged, the unfortunate society, and, and then people, um, the idea of new opportunities. Think of contextualization this way. It's like the opening crawl line to the Star Wars movies. It does not give away anything about the plot, but it does give you a little background as to what's happening as the film begins. Essentially, that's what you're trying to do with contextualization. You won't go too far back in time. There's no need to go back to the 1850s in this particular essay. Going back to the 30s, going back to the Great Depression, going to the 20, late 20s, 30s, that's, that's, that's okay. I think. Um, but we need to focus in here at the very bottom of the introductory paragraph. So here we're getting into the thesis statement. That needs to be the last thing you put in your introduction. Always the last thing. Readers will be looking for that. This particular student, I think, was trying to use the thesis formula of although X, Y, because A, B, and C. Let's remember that X represents your counterpoint. Y is your argument, and then A, B, and C are your categories. Can you see the, so some similarities between the two? Remember, the thinking skill is continuity and change over time. Essentially, with this in a thesis statement, what you're trying to say is, well, what's more significant, the continuities or the changes? In this particular one, this person's arguing very positively. They're actually saying that there are more the changes were more significant than the continuities. And so because they were mentioning a very positive argument because they wrote something positive they start off with something negative first there's your counterpoint and then you can see the other categories um, you talk about women and racial minorities and this uh, this this uh, particular thesis statement does a good job of making an argument as well so I think it's a, a good example of one going forward now as we go through the rest of this essay I'm not going to read word for word the paragraphs it'd be a good idea to pause the video at some point in time just skim through them but when you see something in red those are pieces of SFI what is SFI specific factual information or you could think of them as key terms I like to ask my students to try and shoot for about three to five key terms per paragraph just to have as many examples back up what your claims are uh, will may be or whatever with evidence and so if you see anything in red, that's what we're looking at, SFI. Purple, we're looking at argumentation and what I also call level two writing as they're showing causes, effects, they're showing how and why the information matters. So in this particular, in this, excuse me, in this particular paragraph, I can tell you that it's got good SFI, lots of key terms. The one thing I'm not too sure about is I feel like they missed some opportunities to expand on the roles of women. I'm not 100% convinced that things changed for women after reading this particular paragraph, but this person um, gets a little bit more detailed in paragraph two. Here's what I mean by that. So it says, while the 19th Amendment may have more directly contributed to women's rights, World War II proved to many naysayers that women were capable of much more than what they were given in society. Again, by, by doing what? I would have liked for them to use a little bit more examples, um, a few more examples in this essay or in this particular paragraph of women, but I do understand that they have a background with it. Now, paragraph two, we're talking about racial minorities, in particular, Hispanic Americans. We're talking African Americans as well. I see good SFI in here, but what do you notice with the purple terms in here as well? I mean, you've got uh, how they benefited, how you've got a future civil rights movement that started, how uh, pressure was put on the Roosevelt administration. 
Um, they even talk about here um, the nativist feelings in the 1920s. They actually start contrasting a little bit. Now, you know you've got a smart student if they were going in and starting to make those connections by talking about this is um, this is unlike something we saw in the 1920s where immigrants were rejected. In this era, in the 40s, we're actually embracing immigrants, um, of course, for different reasons. But you see that happening as well. And again, enhancement of the lives. It led to leaders such as Cesar Chavez um, going on to, found, to start movements to fight for better civil rights for Hispanic Americans as well. So I hope you see that in these type of essays, you're not necessarily just giving me the story of um, the, the beginning of the civil rights movement. They're talking, they're making an argument that all these opportunities went on to help start and kickstart, spark these movements later on. They're, they're not giving me the whole history of Executive Order 8802 or the Bracero program. There's no need for that. They're giving me the reasons for why this led to greater things uh, later on down the road. Now, here is an important thing for you to know, take note of. Here's where the student is starting to mention the continuities. And you see that where it talks about um, discrimination, uh, race riots, persisted in the bigoted and native ideas of the past. So now we know that we're getting into the topic of the continuities. This person shows changes and changes, A and B, paragraphs one and two. They're going to finish their essay, part C here, by talking about the continuity. So you see the Zoot Suit Riots and Executive Order 9066 or Japanese internment. The Korematsu case is being used in this as well. So this student does a good job of mentioning the continuities right here at the end. You get no points for having an amazing conclusion. But as you look through here, think about how this person kind of tied up and kind of summarized all of the things that they mentioned in the previous paragraphs beforehand. Now, I can tell you that there is a point that this person is striving to earn right here at this very final part of this paragraph called synthesis. This is no longer emphasized in um, a push, and there's no longer going to be a point awarded to it, but it's good thinking. So as you finish out your essay, you want to try and recap, prove your point, and just kind of tie everything up um, by maybe mentioning what's going to happen for them in the, in the future. And that person sort of starts to do that towards the end. All right, y'all. I hope that that was helpful. Please let me know if you still have questions. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.